Victory's Vision Christian Church, welcome. Thanks for coming this morning and joining us, all you that are out there, and Frank's here with us too. Hello, everybody. We use these glasses as our logo. God wants you to put those glasses on the inside eyes that you have, that you see the cross, that you see the blood of Jesus, which takes away all your sins, all your faults, all your mistakes, he paid the price for him. God is not judging you anymore if you believe that Jesus paid the price for you, that you agree that when he died, you died. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's what the word says. You can uh, get more teachings that we have on www.victoriesvision.org. And if you want to send us an offering, we have PayPal on there. Uh, we also, you can send a check to Post Office Box 295, at Gilbert, Arizona, 85299. So welcome today. Today we are going to talk about the love of God. The love of God. It's the greatest thing that you can learn about. The greatest thing. You know, if you read the Old Testament, you see things where, oh, God punished this person and God punished that person and killed this group and this fight. The New Testament is different. Jesus said, I came to bear witness to the truth. What is the truth? The truth is that for God so loved the world that he wanted to change the things that were going on with mankind. Excuse me. <coughs> he wanted to make changes. He wanted to show the truth. And the truth is that God loves mankind. For God so loved the world, the Bible says in John 3, 16. What does all that mean? Well, today we're going to Talk about how to let God's love grow in you. How to let God's love grow in you. I've done this talk before, but I've made a few changes because I think it's a little bit deeper and we should understand it a little more than we do. We need to see that God has put seeds on the inside of us. Do you hear that? Seeds on the inside of us in His Word. His Word is a seed. If you look at the parable of the sower sows the Word, it says that seeds were sown on the wayside. That seed is the Word of God. And God has sown seeds in your heart. And it's up to you. You want to let it grow? Some don't let it grow. Some want it to grow. Some get careful, and worried, fearful. Some have no understanding. And the enemy comes and steals that seed. That seed is the love of God. God loves you. See this? That's the love of God through Jesus Christ because Jesus paid the price for your faults, mistakes, and all of your guilt. So if you get rid of the guilt, you're going to see the love of God. You're going to believe the love of God. Jesus is the seed of God's love. Jesus is the seed. Jesus is the word. When the word comes on the inside of you and you understand, begin to understand it, what it means, it's the message of the gospel itself. That Jesus went to the cross and he died for you. So you can get rid of all your guilt in your life. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how bad you were. I don't care what's going on. He paid the price. You did what you did because of the way you saw yourself. God wants to change that vision of ourselves in every one of us. He wants us to get rid of the guilt and put on those Victory's Vision glasses. And what do you see? You look at yourself through those glasses. You don't see no junk thinking. You don't see no faults and mistakes. What do you see? You see, God loves you unconditionally. Jesus is the seed of that love when it comes into you. That love first comes into us in seed form. Seed form. What's a seed? It's a little tiny seed. Do you ever see an oak tree? Oak trees are huge. It's one of the hardest woods that are out there. It isn't the very hardest, but it's one of the hardest woods out there. And the little seed is like an acorn. Take an acorn seed. It's got an oak tree in it, and actually many, many oak trees are in that seed. You with me? Let me say that again. Take an acorn seed. It's got an oak tree in it, and actually many oak trees. It can re reproduce after its own kind. The same here. The seed of God's love on the inside of you has Almighty God himself in that seed on the inside of you. The Bible says they that are joined to the Lord are one spirit. You, your flesh is just a container for the real you on the inside. The real you is the spirit you. 
when that spirit leaves you, when you die and this body dies, you either go with God or you go somewhere else. If you want to go with God, you got to know that Jesus paid the price for you. So if you know that he paid the price for you and you've accepted that, what does that mean? That means God says, your sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. They've been paid. The judgment was on Jesus, so God isn't going to judge you anymore. There is no more judgment. It was on Jesus. For God to judge you again would mean that Jesus wasn't enough. But the Bible says he's more than enough. Let's get back to this. Take an acorn seed. It's got an oak tree in it. Many oak trees, and it can reproduce after its own kind. You put that seed into the ground after it germinates then. Once it's in the ground, it begins to germinate. The outside shell has to decompose. That's what germination is. The outside shell. See this shell? This is an, old, an acorn. That shell starts to decompose through the moisture and through the warmth of the sun and through the earth. The warmth of, of the earth. It, the shell can starts to decompose this is what we call germination you got that are you with me germination what does that mean you have an outside shell all of humans have an outside shell it is our thinking before we come to know jesus we think that god is a legalistic god we think for god to accept us our actions have to be perfect and then someday, if our actions are all perfect, then we get to go to heaven. We get to serve God. We get to live with God. Your actions can never be perfect. It's impossible to be perfect. Hmm? The Bible says all have sinned. What does that mean? That means you're under this standard that your conscience says you have to do good. You have to do what is right. Well, God knows that that's impossible for us to do because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You see these two trees? These two trees? This here tree represents your conscience trying to be good enough. The knowledge of good and evil, right and wrong. When your conscience says, hey, you didn't do what is right, it's going to condemn you. It's going to judge you. Well, God wants to take that judgment away from you by looking at what Jesus did at the cross. That cross represents that tree. The Bible says anyone that hangs on a tree is under a curse. So Jesus was cursed so we don't have to be anymore once we receive what he did for us. You have an outside shell. That outside shell represents your natural man, your, your uh, carnal man, your right and wrong thinking. That's what it represents. Your flesh, sometimes it's called. Who and when you came to Christ and you heard the knowledge that you are dead. That old concept of trying to be good enough is now dead. When Jesus, when you agree with what Jesus did for you, he died, and that means that when he died, he did it for you. So in a sense, God considers that you died. Well, can a dead man still be judged and judged on this earth? No, he can't be right and wrong anymore. He's dead. So that's how God sees it, that you're dead. When Jesus died, you died. When Jesus rose from the dead, in God's eyes, you rose from the dead with him, and you became a, what the Bible called born again, a new creation. Old things had passed away. The old you, God isn't looking at anymore. That's wiped out. The judgment has been paid in full. Let me say this again. The outside shell represents your natural man, your flesh. Who and when you came to Christ and you heard the knowledge that you are dead in Christ, that's your outside shell now gone away. It's germinating. And you have germinated in God and in Christ. And your roots now, see, this is starting to develop a branch that comes out. This is a brand new oak tree. The root starts to go into the ground. The shell gets decomposed. It gets cast away, and this new root goes into the ground. It can go deep into the ground of God's love. That's what happens to us. The more knowledge we get about 
what happened to us at the cross, the more understanding we have, we begin to dig a root into God's love. How much does God love us? Does he love us a little bit? Does he love us a whole bunch? The more understanding, the more you receive that he loves you because of what Jesus did for you, not because what you did. The only thing you had to do was believe and receive. Jesus did it for you. And you say, thank you, Lord. You paid the price for me. I'm free. I'm a brand new Christian born again of the Spirit of God. That Word of God, that seed that came into you is the Holy Spirit on the inside of that. And He brings the life of God. The Holy Spirit is the life of God. Comes on the inside of you. And the inside of you begins to change everything about you. You begin to like yourself. You begin to get rid of all the guilt in your life. Oh, well, there's an enemy out there that tries to lie to us. It's called the devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever. Oh, I don't believe in that, Pastor John. I don't believe there's a devil. Well, he's working on you, and you don't even realize it. You know, that's his biggest lie is not to believe in him, not to believe that he exists. He's the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to steal that love of God, that seed out of your heart. You have germinated in God and in Christ, and your roots can go deep into the ground of his love and be fed and nourished with more knowledge, who, more knowledge of his love of who you are. You can have the knowledge of who you are now in Christ. You're a brand new creation according to the, what the Bible says. When you believe that Jesus died for you, all the guilt is gone. It's at the cross. It's gone. It's wiped out. In other words, baptism is a symbolic uh, gesture that you're dead to that natural realm. You're dead to being judged anymore. Whether you get sprinkled, whether you get dipped, whether you get dunked, or whether you never had baptism, it's a symbol to show what happens to us when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The old you is dead. You're a brand new creation in Christ, and God... Father, Son, and Holy Spirit looks at you now through those glasses and they see that the price was paid for you so there's no judgment coming against you. What does that do? When that guilt is gone, we begin to see, we begin to like ourselves. It changes our character. It changes our personality. It changes everything because we don't have any hate for ourselves anymore. If we have hate for ourselves on the inside, it's going to come out on the outside and hate for everybody else. You see people around and you run into, they want to judge everybody around them. Oh, I don't like that man. I hate him. I hate him. I hate her. I hate her. That's because the you you see on the inside is the you you'll be on the outside. Let me finish this. Your roots can go deep into the ground of God's love and be fed and nourished with more knowledge of who you are in Christ. And now you begin to see and understand that God loves you unconditionally unconditionally i don't believe that pastor john he's looking at my actions no 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 no. that's not what the bible says he's not looking at your actions let me say this stop a minute with your thinking understand what i'm going to say does your actions matter to god what makes you do the things that you do if you don't know jesus if you don't know what happened to you at the cross you're going to look at yourself and you're going to judge yourself with that conscience of yours. And you're going to find yourself, the more you find it, you missed it here. You missed it there. You did wrong here. You did wrong there. That judgment is guilt. You're going to put your belief system that you're guilty all the time. That belief system is going to work in your body, in your mind. And it's like I said, the you you see on the inside. If you see that you're all full of guilt. It's going to come out on the outside. It's going to create your character, your personality. It's going to create things. You're going to do things you don't want to do. You know better than to do those things. You're, be, you're going to become, listen to me closely, you're going to become a real liar. Why? Because the you you see doesn't meet the standard of any good. And so you're going to try to create a false standard by lying. Don't do that. Put on the glasses on the inner eye of you and look at yourself through the cross and through the blood of Jesus and what do you see? I'm guilt-free. God loves me unconditionally. I don't care what other people say about me. 
when I can see that I'm guilt-free and God loves me, that is a motivating factor in my life to make me do what is right. When you're guilty, you're going to do what is not right. It's going to motivate and it's going to amplify for you to do more. Why do people steal anything? Think about this. Because they look at themselves and they think, I don't have anything. The easiest way to get something is to steal it. With the unconditional love of God, if God loves you, God says there isn't anything I won't do for you. You begin to build a trust and it's not overnight. You learn more and more to trust God. The Bible says, I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. He says, the, the right people, righteous people, you're right before God because of what Jesus did. If you're right before God, you never have to beg for anything. God is going to take care of you because his love is always going to take care of you. Always. His love gives you what is called hope. Bible says God's hope does not disappoint. What is hope? Hope is to always expect something good. If you don't think God loves you unconditionally and you think God is judging you, you're going to expect bad all the time. You're going to see yourself in a bad light and you're going to say, God can't love me. It's impossible. I've done too much in my life for God to love me. Well, then you put it all on the cross. Jesus paid the price in full. Mm -hmm. You got to understand God's love is unconditional. Jesus has a goal for his followers. What's the goal? I am give, this is a scripture, John 13, 34, and 35, out of the Amplified Bible. He says, I am giving you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. So you too are to love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love and unselfish concern for one another. Where does that come from? Listen to this. This statement God said through Jesus. God loved us first so we can love him. When his love comes on the inside of you and you can understand that it's unconditional because of not by your actions, but by what Jesus did for you. He took your guilt away. When you can see that, that God loves you unconditionally, you can love other people unconditionally. Pastor Nancy and I have been married for 51 years. We've had ups and downs. We've had hard times. We've had struggles. We've had disagreements. But what makes you get over those disagreements, all of us, is when you can see you are loved unconditionally, you can forgive other people and love them unconditionally, the ones that are un are just ordinary as can be. Mm-hmm. You can. Do you ever say this? This is what people now are going to say. Whoa, wait a minute, Pastor John. This love stuff, I can't love everybody. But Jesus, how can I love some of the idiots that you put me with? Huh? <laughs> Do you ever say that? Look at this guy. Jesus, how can I love some of the idiots that you put me with? It is only, only, only through the growing seed after that germination that the stuff in that seed will come out. It'll come on the inside of you, in your mind, in your mind's eyes. You'll see God loves me. When you see God loves you, you begin to forgive other people for being the idiots that they are. We need, listen to me, pay attention. We need to cultivate and keep the weeds out. Cultivate means to promote or improve the growth of a plant or a crop by labor and attention. The scripture tells us to labor to enter into his rest. What does that mean, labor into his rest? Huh? It, labor means sometimes we all have a struggle to believe that God loves us. We look at our, our circumstances around us and we think, God's not in it. I'm going through hell. This is terrible. It's a tough life. I can't take this. If God loved me, I wouldn't have to go through this. You labor through that thinking. What does that mean? You focus. Sometimes it is a, 
a struggle to keep your mind focused that God loves you, that God paid the price for judgment, that you don't have to pay it. Jesus paid it. It's a struggle to keep your mind stayed on God. I hear it all the time as a pastor. I hear people, well, I know I'm supposed to cast down imaginations, Pastor John, but I just can't cast those down. Yes, you can. You fill your imagination with the Word of God. You know, think about this. It's one of the greatest things God has given us is an imagination. What do you think on? Huh? Think on things that are good and pure and right, and they will make your body in order. The more junk thinking you think, the worse it's going to be. I'm reading a book. It was originally printed in 1906 by, a, I think it was a chiropractor or something. It, well, I'm not sure what the guy was, but it's biblical. It, it's not a, a Christian book, but it's got a lot of Bible in it. And as a man thinks, the Bible says in Proverbs, so is he. If you're th- and Jesus made this statement. He says, if your eye, your inner eye, be full of darkness, your whole body will be full of darkness. What does that mean? What is your inner eye? It's looking at your imagination. It says, if your inner eye is full of light, your whole body will be full of light. Think about this. The root of sickness starts, the, let me say this again, the root of sickness starts with looking at darkness. What is darkness? Junk thinking about yourself, junk thinking about everybody else, judging yourself, judging the world, constantly focusing on that. It's going to put your body out of order. What do you mean, Pastor John? Yeah, just like you have a computer and you start sending, typing, and you send signals to that computer. When you're thinking, junk thinking, you're sending dark signals to this body, which is an electrical system, a chemical system, and it's going to short out here, it's going to short out there, it's going to short out here. But if you're thinking on things that are good and right and good, like the Word of God, that God loves you, you're meditating on that, what's it going to do? Your whole body will be full of light. It will put things that are out of order back into order. You know, when Jesus uh, had communion with his disciples, and he said, do this in memory of me, The whole purpose of communion, I don't care how you do the communion, wine, juice, whatever, the whole purpose is to think what his, he did for it. He takes bread and he breaks the bread. And he says, my body, Jesus' body is broken for you. It's broken for you, so yours doesn't have to be broken. He took the price of judgment for you. You got to agree with that. Yeah, he took it for me. What does that do? That makes, cleans up my imagination. If I focus on that imagination that he did it for me and I'm not guilty anymore, there isn't anything that God wouldn't do for me. Well, it's, it's a struggle. You gotta, you gotta fight those imaginations. You gotta cast them down and fight them. It's the good fight of faith in God's word working on the inside of you. Think about that. But Jesus, how can I love someone of these idiots that you put me with? It is only through the growing seed, after it germinates, that the stuff in the seed will come out. We need to cultivate and keep the weeds out. Cultivate means to promote or improve the growth of the plant. The weeds are junk thinking that are trying to steal your good thinking. By the labor and attention to cultivating it. Scripture tells us to labor Cultivate your thinking. Cultivate your thinking. Take the word, take the words that you're seeing, take the thoughts that you're having. Are they junk thinking? Are they bad against you? Or are they good? Take the junk ones out. Pull them out like you're pulling weeds. Mm-hmm. The Jesus seed in us is the seed of the tree of life. We have a tree of life here. We have a tree of the knowledge of good and evil here. This one is working your way to heaven, which can never be done. It can never be done. You can't be good enough all the time. The Bible says you miss it in one, you miss it in all. So God said, this is living by faith in what Jesus has done for you. Jesus has done for you. This is what it is. This is the tree of life. Listen to this. This is a scripture in the book of Revelation. Then the angel of the Lord showed me 
the river of the water of life. John the Apostle had a vision, and it's called the book of Revelation. An angel was in that vision, and in that vision he saw a river of the water of life. As clear as crystal, it was flowing from the throne of God. And the Lamb of God, Jesus, down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of that river stood the tree of life. Here's a river coming out from the throne of God. It's the Word of God. Water is symbolic of hearing the Word, of the Word. If you wa Jesus washed His disciples' feet. Your feet are what contacts you with the earth. You pick up dirt, you pick up dust, especially if your feet, you know, had no shoes and socks on or sandals or anything. You're going to pick up dirt, your feet are going to get dirty. It's symbolic of picking up junk thinking in this world because the world is under a curse. It's not how God originally created it. It's been distorted from Adam and Eve. It's been distorted. And so what? When you pick that up, Jesus wanted to wash that off his disciples' feet, and the apostle Peter said, no, 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 I want you to wash my whole body, not just my feet. Jesus said, your body is washed by the word. The word of God is the water of God. It's the river of God. When he's talking about a river of life, it's the Word of God coming down, and on each side, this is like poetic in this vision of what he's saying. What, I, what does that mean? What does poetic mean? It means each one of these things is a symbol. It's symbolic of God trying to, if you dig deeper in the understanding, you can understand what he's trying to say to you. But sometimes you read it over and say, that don't make no sense to me but you dig a little bit deeper and then it begins to make sense. And if you are saved or you're in Christ and you're a Christian, the Bible says those that are joined to the Lord are one spirit. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you who will give you understanding. Let me read this again. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit. 12 crops of fruit. What does that mean? I'm going to read it down here. It yielded its fruit every month. Every month it was good. The tree of life had fruit, and the tree of life in the book of Genesis, the beginning of the Bible, there were two trees in the middle of the garden. Those two trees represent two laws or standards of living. One is to live by, I'm trying to be good enough, but I can't be good enough, and it's going to condemn you. That's why God said to Adam, don't eat of the fruit of that tree. It will condemn you and make you die. This is the tree of life. What is that? It's always, it, it, it's the walking by faith. The standard is to walk by faith in God's word, in God's love, in understanding what Jesus did for you. When you have faith in that, that's the tree of life. It's going to give you wisdom. It's going to give you understanding. This doesn't have the same understanding that this one has. This understanding here is going to tell you, you got to be good enough. you got to be good enough. you got to try harder. And you get discouraged from that when you see that you can't try harder. You can't do it anymore. So if you're trying and trying and trying and you're giving up with life, that's what you're under. And you need to change that and move over to here, the tree of life, which says God's on your side. There's no more judgment because Jesus took it all. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. This tree, in this vision, yielded, yield means give to, it gives out fruit every month. And it had leaves on these trees. And the leaves were for the healing of all nations. That's what Revelation says. Well, listen to me closely. Twelve crops of fruit. There were twelve sons of Jacob. That's no, that's no, Jacob is Israel. Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. Israel had 12 sons. Each son had a different personality and a different character. Each son, there was 12 of them, okay? These 12 were the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm giving you a little history lesson here. There were 12 disciples that Jesus picked. Why 12? Why 12? And I don't know, I don't have scripture right now to back it up, 
But I believe that 12 represents different types of personalities. The 12 sons have, all of them had different personalities. The 12 disciples of Jesus had different personalities. So what does that got to do with me, Pastor John? Only the seed of the tree of life on the inside of you, which is the love of God, can bring real fruit regularly out of any personality. You got that? You with me? The seed of God's love in you will recreate, if you were an old crab, old nasty, nasty man, nasty woman, just bitter, 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 the love of God on the inside of you, as you let it grow, will change your personality. It'll change your character. It'll make you a loving person. It'll make you at peace with yourself and at peace with the world. Oh, I don't know about that, Pastor John. Hmm? Listen to me closely again. We're talking about the leaves of the trees, healing for the nations. How is a leaf going to be healing? The leaves are for the nourishment and the life of the tree. So it will bear fruit. In the natural realm, leaves, what do leaves do? Hmm? Do you know the leaves of a tree puts out oxygen? Where does all the oxygen come on the earth? It comes from tree leaves. Oh, Pastor John. Yeah, they breathe the opposite of we have. Hmm? We, when we breathe in oxygen, what do we exhale? Carbon dioxide. The trees breathe in carbon dioxide and they exhale, in a sense, um, oxygen. That's where the oxygen on the earth comes from. The leaves use a very special process called photosynthesis. Do you know what photosynthesis is? It converts energy from the sunlight into sugars and starches that a tree uses as food. What I'm trying to show you in this, this thing about the river and about the trees and the leaves is like an allegory. An allegory is a lesson to try to show you something to explain something to all of us where it says the photosynthesis converts, gives energy to that tree. The leaves bring in the sunlight and the sunlight gives them energy to produce the sugars and everything in that fruit. So what does that have to do with us? When you meditate on the love of God, you meditate on that love, you meditate on that love, in a sense, there's like a photosynthesis, but it's a supernatural <laughs> type photosynthesis, that's the comparison, that comes into your mind and into all of your body, and it feeds you and nourishes you just like producing fruit. The more you meditate on the love of God, the more the love of God works in every part of your body and creates a new personality, a personality of unconditional love, a personality of wanting to help each other, a personality of trying to trust in God no matter what goes on in your life. Hmm? Where do you stand in your life? Do you look at everything and you condemn yourself over the life that you have or had? Don't. It's done. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that old man is dead. And you're born again into a new life that you're one spirit with the Lord. You're going to heaven. You can talk to God. You can receive the love of God. But it's a seed form. And a seed has to grow, 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 grow. And the roots have to get deeper in God's love. The more deeper you understand God's love and grow, the more you're going to understand what I'm talking about and what the Bible is talking about and what the gospel and God is talking about. But too many people, their root is not very deep, so they don't have the understanding. They're always looking at themselves, I got to fix myself, I got to change myself. You can't change it. You got to see when God loves you, that's where the change takes place. Leaves use a very special process called photosynthesis to convert air and energy from sunlight into sugars and starches that a tree uses as food. Let me, uh, wait a minute. Okay. Leaves also help keep you cool on hot days, natural leaves. They keep you cool on a hot day. Or if, spiritually speaking, this is the allegory. This is the natural way it does it that leaves help. 
They keep them cool. They keep them uh, fed and everything. What your spiritual leaves, in a sense, are good thinking, good thinking, good thinking on the love of God, on the Word of God. It's your mind thinking. It's going to, in a time of trouble, it's going to give you peace and rest and a way out. What to do? By making shade for you. The leaves fill in the spaces between the branches to make a canopy, sort of an umbrella over the tree. Leaves also help make trees good homes for animals like birds and squirrels and bugs by providing them with shelter, a place to hide, and even food. Shelter, a place to hide, and even food. What does the Bible say in Psalm 91? Hmm? It says that we are to come into the shelter of the Most High. How do you do that? You come into His love, His unconditional love that comes by understanding what Jesus did on the cross for you. And then that love will protect you. It's the place to hide. It's a hiding place. And it is food for life, food to encourage you, to build you up, to get your mind on the Lord and at peace. Our spiritual leaves, listen to me close, our spiritual leaves represent the grace message of, of Jesus Christ. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. When you're born again and God's not judging you no more, even though you're guilty as hell, what does that mean? As hell's nature, you're guilty and acting like the devil. The grace of God, the love of God that's given to you through Jesus Christ has taken your faults and mistakes away and put on Jesus because they were put on him they're not on you anymore you're dead and you're born again like he was raised from the dead God considers you you raised from the dead and a day's going to come where he's going to get rid of this body and you're going to be with the Lord either he comes back or when you die you're not going down there if you know Jesus you're going with him and you're going to get a new body according to the Word of God. Our spiritual leaves represent the grace message of God, the message of God's love for the perfecting of the saints and the edifying of the body of Christ. Grace, grace, unmerited favor edifies you. It builds you up. It shows you God loves you, not by your actions being perfect, because you can't be. It shows that because of believing in what Jesus did for you, you have favor with God. Don't listen to what the world tells you or calls you. Sometimes even brothers and sisters in the Lord will spit out harsh things because of weeds and hot sun and their dried or immature leaves. What does that mean? When people get condemned, when people get, oh God, you know, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And they're judging themselves. They're going to come out with judgment. The you you see on the inside, if it's judged, you're going to judge, be that person on the outside. When you see God loves you unconditionally on the inside, that love is going to come on the outside. That's what it's saying. What does the Bible say in Psalm 1? Happy is the man or woman who does not walk in the way of sinful men. Let me read it again. Happy is the man who does not walk in the way sinful men tell him to or stand in the path of sinners, or sit with those who laugh at the truth. But he finds joy in about that love every day and night. This man that thinks about God's love every day and night is like a tree planted by rivers of water, which gives its fruit at the right time, and its leaf never dies, never dries up. Whatever he does will work out well for him. You have a choice, believe this scripture or not. Some people, they ignore that. I don't believe that. It's not working for me. That's because your roots are not deep enough into the love of God. Deep, deep, deep. They need to be deep. How, how, how do they get deeper? Focus on it. Be aware of it. Look into it a little bit deeper. Got some more information for you. We are to be full-grown trees of life, able to protect to nourish, feed, and edify everyone we can. When you look at the love of God, when you see that you died in Christ when He died, and God is looking at you and says, I love you unconditionally, and you begin to believe that, it changes everything about you. 
The Lord wants us to meditate on His love given to us through the cross. Also, meditate on your in Christ identity. You're a brand new creation in Christ. You meditate on that. You think about that. It is, listen, on a tree, a tree has sap. Where does that sap come from? Hmm? It comes from deep roots that can take the water that is moisture that is in the ground, and that moisture comes up and creates a sap in that tree. When you meditate on God's unconditional love, it's like the water of the word is coming into you and creating the sap of God's love. And that sap is what gives nourishment to your tree. There's many benefits to knowing and receiving God's unconditional love. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. Let me say that again. There's no fear in God's love, but perfect love casts out fear. Uh, where does it cast the fear out? Out of our imagination. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. How do you get perfect in love? Is by meditating and understanding more what Jesus did for you. Too many Christians, they don't have a clue. Oh, I'm saved, that's it. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to learn nothing more. If you let your roots go deep into the love of God, everything in your life will change. Victory's vision, Christian church. Hmm? What does that say? What does that mean? That's who we are. Put on those glasses. Put them on and you see that you died at the cross, that you were raised from the dead at, after the cross. The blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. We want you to go to our website, we have, it will lead you on to a whole bunch more teachings. We have a whole bunch more teachings on YouTube. We have some on Facebook and we have some on SoundCloud. This one will be up on uh, Facebook as it is now and I'll save it on Facebook and it will be up on YouTube also later today. What does that mean? The more word you can put in you, the more understanding that you will have about the love of God. You got that? I wanna say a prayer. For all those that are listening and all those that ever listen to this, Father, open their minds, open their hearts, that they can see what Jesus did for them, that they can see it is the nourishment, the love of God, what Jesus did on the cross for them is the nourishment that will build them up, that will take them out of fear, that will make them trust in you with all their heart. When they trust in you with all their heart, they will not lean on junk understanding, but they'll lean on what you say to them. And as they lean on that, what you say to them, the peace of God will surround them, the favor of God will surround them and protect them. I pray this in Jesus' name. I also wanna tell you, we have some books. You can go to our website. You can order those books on our website. We ask for a $20 donation that covers some of the printing that we've had to do and some of the... Uh, postage that we send out and actually the postage is probably a fourth of it or a third of it so we just ask that you cover that this one tells you almost what I've been sharing with you today the love of God will you take it daily and it will cast out any guilt in your life this one emergency faith first aid both of these are mini books this one emergency faith first aid a quick help guide for any crisis you can go on our website if you want to know what this and these are more about. We have teachings on each one of these. This is the instruction. There's five steps that God gave to Moses when they were at the Red Sea. It's called the Red Sea position. If you go to our web, uh, go to our, our website, it'll lead you to YouTube. If you go to our YouTube site, you can look up the Red Sea position is the talk, and it shows you. Here's the children of Israel they just came out of Egypt. They're, they're stationed on the beach of the Red Sea. And there's a whole ocean in front of them that, how can they get across it? They're looking to get across it. And they look behind them, Pharaoh and his sea. And they went across on dry land, the Bible says. And there's a lot of people that doubt that. But you know, there are evidence where they went under the water of the Red Sea scuba divers and you can see pictures of chariot wheels and other stuff under there you don't believe me look it up i want to thank you for listening
Let me go back to Victory's Vision Glasses. We ask, send us an offering. You can go to PayPal. Any kind of offering will help. Any kind. Why? Because we want to continue to do these messages of the love of God to people. We want to be listening.